let's understand beamforming. I like to think of it from the receiver perspective. So let's think of a receiving antenna, and I'm going to draw it here. And let's think that we have a source that's over here sending us a signal. It could be a sonar signal, it could be a, a radar signal, it could be a radio phone wireless communication signal. And so this is the path that it's coming in on, the straight line path uh, to our receiver. And what's going to be happening is we have a a waveform that is oscillating. So it's going in a sine wave uh, as it comes towards us because it's at a certain frequency. So this is a frequency that's coming towards us in a certain direction uh, from that source. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure this signal and we're going to put this signal into our uh, receiver, which is a bit of electronic circuitry. So I'm going to draw a box around our receiver here and so that we're really getting the idea that we are taking the signal into our signal processing unit. Okay, so we've measured the signal and what does it look like? Well, this signal here, it starts at zero and it's going in a sine wave oscillating like this. So this is the signal that we were receiving on our, from our antenna into our electric wire and into our circuit. Okay, what if we had another antenna? So let's have another antenna here and let's think of our source as being so far away that it's coming in a parallel direction. So the source is a long way away. It starts off emitting in a curve, of course, radiating out from the source. Um, but by the time it gets to us, uh, we are far enough away such that wherever these peaks are, they are straight line peaks. So the wave front is a straight line. We're going to assume a long distance away uh, just for, for the moment. Okay, so this, what this shows us here is that this waveform, if it's coming from the direction I've drawn, it's going to reach this antenna first along this line. It reaches this antenna first before it reaches this antenna. And the way I've drawn it for this angle that I've drawn it and the frequency of wave that I've drawn uh, then and the distance apart of these antenna elements, uh, the way it's shown here is, well, it's going to arrive half of a wavelength here before it gets to this antenna. Okay, because this, ant this antenna is receiving this part of the wavelength, but it still has to travel that further extra distance to get to that antenna. Okay, so what we might do in our processing is we would introduce a delay. So inside our electronics, in our sampler, in our electronics, we could do this in analog or digital, we're going to introduce a delay. And what's that going to do? Well, that's going to mean that these are going to line up in time. And so we can then, if we've introduced that delay, and if we've picked the right delay, which is exactly this time difference here, so this delay of time, that's a time delay. Uh, so this is a time delay, and this is a physical distance between the antennas. If you match those two up, then these waveforms will align, and then we can put these waveforms into an adder, and we can get a signal coming out, which is the addition of those two. What it means is we're collecting more energy. So the energy from one antenna plus the energy from another antenna. And if we adjust the delay, then they will add up in this way where they their energies add. And that's what we call beamforming. So why is it beamforming? Well, we're getting the energy from that direction as an addition. So the two waveforms add. Now let's think about this over here. Well, maybe we're, I'm going to plot a, what we call a sort of a beam pattern. So in that direction there, we're getting a nice strong signal. So if we think of the distance along this line as being the signal strength, uh, we're getting a signal up here. Well, let's think about the signal, another signal for the same delay where we've tuned this delay to match that angle for this frequency and that distance. What about a signal from another user who's, let's say, straight off away from uh, the antenna side on. So that waveform is going to arrive at our antenna. Again, we're going to assume it's a long way away. So that's going to arrive again with wavefronts which don't have any delay between them. 
So when our antennas, when our two antennas receive them, and there's no delay for this source at this direction, uh, there's no delay, but we introduce a delay, and we're introducing a delay of half a wavelength, well, we're going to get, this one's going to come through straight as a signal like this, but this one is going to come through exactly half a wavelength out, because there was no delay from the physical situation of the wavefronts hitting us, but we've introduced a delay. So for signals coming from this direction, they will add up exactly opposite each other and cancel each other out. So the one coming through here with no delay, this will be the normal waveform. The one that's coming through from this antenna, from that transmitter, is going to be, we're introducing a delay because we've tuned it for this direction, and it's now, it, for this direction, is going to exactly cancel and we'll get zero coming out. So in the, in the direction straight off, we're getting actually zero. And you can think, you can imagine as we swift, swift around, if we keep this delay fixed in our processing, if the, if the user, the transmitter, if the transmitter moves around, then we'll be getting different signal strengths from that transmitter and they'll be forming something that we call a beam and it's going to have different, at different angles they will add together and at other angles they will cancel. This way angle they cancelled for this scenario, this angle they added perfectly and we got a good strong signal. And this is what we call a beam pattern and this is called beam forming. Of course if we had a third antenna here, so we're collecting even more energy and it's always good to collect more energy, especially in si signals that are weak and there's lots of noise, so we want to have lots of collection of energy. For this one, we could add two times the delay if we're interested in the signal from this direction. Uh, and then this signal here with twice the delay for that direction would now add up again in phase. They would all add up into our adder. We're going to get signals from that direction adding up with even more energy because we're collecting more energy. And from this direction here, cancelling. And so and what we get is an even thinner beam. So the more antenna elements we have, the more spaced out, the thinner the beam that we get. And so this is how we are interested in designing the beam shapes, the number of antenna elements, the way we pick these delays, and how we tune these delays. If we were to tune this delay and change the delay, that would mean we would be moving the direction of the main part of the beam, where all of these signals are adding up. And the same thing exactly happens in reverse for transmission. So if you're transmitting a signal, all of this is just exactly reversed. You would transmit the signal with different delays if you wanted to transmit in the direction of a user, say for a, from a base station in a mobile communications, you would delay your signal off one of the elements by more than another and less and zero delay off the final one. And you will, if you pick those delays right, you will get a signal transmitting where the signals add up in the direction of the user that you're interested in sending your signal to. And for other users, you can be more clever even than just these simple delays. You could have amplitude changes as well as delays. And then you could tune where the nulls are. And so you could direct a null so that all the signals, you could arrange it so that all the signals add up deconstructively and cancel each other out in the direction of users that you don't want to send your signal to. And they add up fully constructively in the direction of a user that you do want to send your signals to. So this is beamforming. So don't forget to like this video and to share it with your friends uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos.